Okay, in this presentation we are going to introduce non-parametric tests and we'll start off with a simple test called the sign test which is based on the normal, sorry, the binomial distribution. So, a psychologist claims that visual memory is more effective than aural memory, which is memory to do with hearing. To test this claim, 10 students are selected at random and examined for visual and aural memory using a standard memory test. For each student, the psychologist notes whether his or her aural or visual memory score is better. So we have two states here, A and V, and we want to know uh, for each student they're classified as A or V. Okay, so we have three who are classified as A, which means that their aural score is better than their visual score, and we have seven whose visual score was uh, better than their aural score, so we're classifying them as V. Carry out a suitable analysis of these data to investigate the psychologist claims and comment on your results. So this is a binomial sign test or sign test actually because it's sort of what we're going to do is model it as a binomial experiment and we're going to look at the sort of the signs. Okay now essentially what we have here uh, V and A is essentially they're equivalent to plus or minus depending on which is better but essentially we have two categories okay a and V. So it's a binomial, it could be classed as a binomial experiment. And we don't really worry too much about denying the sign test here, but actually it implicitly suggests a sign, a negative, negative or positive uh, score. Okay. So the null hypothesis is that A and V are equally likely. Okay. That for the general population, we should get a roughly the same amount of children who are both A, A as V. Okay. So here, hence the number of A's is binomial with a parameter with parameters 10 and 1 half, as is the number of V's, if the null hypothesis is true. Okay, so if we were to perform, perform this experiment an, an infinite number of times, that we, we would get roughly, on average, 5 and 5 for each experiment. Okay, so we get 7 and 3 in this experiment, we might get 4 and 2 in the next, or 4 and 6 in the next six and four and the one after and the opposite odds and overall for the general population it works out to be five and five per each batch of 10 kids 10 students okay that's the null hypothesis the alternative hypothesis is that v is greater now that actually has uh, importance later on that means it's a one-sided test sorry i actually stated here a one-sided -sided test is therefore needed that's particularly important when we start looking at the tables okay so there's a special tables, statistical tables, that we would use. And the important thing about that is that it, uh, we have to be careful how to read the tables because they're sort of formatted for a two-sided test. So we have to adjust our, our approach accordingly. Okay. Now, this are, these are the tests that are essentially how we calculate the p-values. Okay. For a certain threshold. Okay. Here we're going to work on the basis of... Well, actually, it doesn't really matter one or the other because uh, a, a equals 3 or B equals 7. So we can let K equal to 3 and then go less than or equal to uh, N, probably N less than or equal to K and then otherwise K equal to 7. So we should get uh, the same p-value e in each case. Okay. So uh, we're going to use, actually, I can't remember which one we used. The, top one here so it's it actually it does actually format with how we specify the alternative hypothesis okay but mathematically the actually the other one is also the exact same okay so this is what we're going to do here by the way this is actually based this is a simplification of the binomial distribution the probability density function uh, or the the cumulative density functions okay so um yeah, actually, you, when you work it or you when you work it out, you realize it pretty quickly. N and uh, P and N are uh, P equals Q in these cases, not 0.5 or one half, and that is where we get this half here. Okay, so anyway, probability of N greater than or equal to seven. So essentially, what we're going to do is calculate our p value. So 10 choose seven plus 10 choose eight plus 10 choose nine plus 10 choose 10 times 1 over 2 to the power of 10, okay, and here 
10 refers to the 10 students. So essentially working that out, we have got 120 plus 45 plus 10 plus 1 times 1 over 2 to the power of 10. Working that out, we get 0 0.172. Actually, I think it is, having done this, used these numbers before, I think you might get the answer closer to 0 0.1718. What you can do there is actually use uh, R or something like that, the programming language R, to figure that out if you want to check your answers. So in this case, this is our p-value. And our p-value, we're comparing this to 0 0.05, using that as our significance level. We weren't told a significance level, so just in the absence of a significance level, we, we use 0 0.05 essentially the p-value is not less than 0 0.05 so we reject we fail to reject the null hypothesis there, there's not enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis basically 10 students a sample size of 10 to make generalizations about the population just won't work now really what we're trying to do here is actually just introduce the test so it's a sort of non-parametric Statistics Test 101. So, there's another part of this where we get into a, a, a procedure that we would use more often. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually pause it here and start a new video.